Everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. One of the things that I'm trying to get y'all to understand, right? is that men think for themselves. As a man, you have to be a logical, rational being. I'm not talking about fake logic. I'm talking about you have to be able to process raw data in the real world as a man. Now, I'm gonna let you hear what Nuri Muhammad said, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna break it down. I'm gonna explain to you why this is not only not true what he said, but it's very dangerous because it sounds true. For a lot of y'all, what, what I'm about to let you hear is going to sound true, and that's a problem. And after I explain to you why it's not true, I want you to sit back and think. When you, when you talk, when you stop this video, don't don't start another video. I want you to cut this off and think for a second about what Brother Kush be trying to tell y'all, bro. Let's roll. Here go Nori. We're real close to the quote. I think I said that we we've got dollars, but what we need is sense. You know, when you count the mathematics and look at black people as a nation. There's 233 independent nations on the earth. Now, out of the 233 independent nations, black people at $1.3 trillion are the eighth richest nation in the world. Yet, we don't have anything in our community that we can call our own. So by the simple fact that we're the eighth richest nation on the earth and we don't have our own educational system, don't feed ourselves, grow our own food, is a sign that we got dollars but we need some sense. So I said we blame the white man for 95% of our problems, but we still spend 97% of our money with them. First of all, we so-called black Americans are not a single unit. We are an on paper community, meaning that there is no centralized unifying anything among us. The only thing that unifies us really is our enemy is the fact that this system is hostile towards us. And that is the one thing we do not unify around. Trying to unify around economics is a fallacy. What exactly are we gonna buy for black people? The main things you need, food, clothing, shelter, energy, gasoline, none of these things. These are things that we need. And none of these things we can get from black people. See, what these Negroes are talking about is you go and shop at their restaurant. But these niggas talk about you go shop at their bakery. You could do that, but that's not going to change anything for black people. It's silliness, people. I want you to look at this chart. <clears throat> because a lot of people don't understand this stuff, you know what I'm saying? People like Nuri Muhammad, he don't understand this stuff because he's just a con artist, right? In America, almost all of the wealth it's controlled and owned or whatever. It's concentrated in the hands of very, very, very few. Everybody knows this. We call it the 1%. We call it the 1% of the 1%. That blue represents 1% of the population. 1% controls 95% of the wealth. I want you to think about this. So when he said that what we, what we can do, we got all this money coming in. We could do all this stuff. How? Because those are the people that control the system. Mm -hmm. The next is the pink. That's your elite managerial class. That's your government. That's your politicians. They ensure that the system maintains itself. That the system is always ran a certain way. So it's their jobs to make sure laws are passed, to make sure work policies are passed, to make sure, you know, pay scales are regulated. All of this is done from the peak. Then you got the professional managerial class. These are the ones you see on like cable news, right? These are your news anchors. These are your professionals. These are the ones that come out as the experts, a la while we call them the 10 percenters, right? Because they are the ones that control the narrative that we got to fight with. They are the ones that allow the pink to justify doing what they do. It's the yellow. Because if those experts don't come out and say these things, the pink can't make laws and policies based on it. 
So the professional managerial class, they're the ones that lay the foundation for everything the pink do that benefit the blue. And you know who all of that is built upon? The red and the green. We fall into the working class and the poor class. That's where most of the population is. That's 85% of the population. I need to do a second pie chart so you can see this to make the visuals a little better. The red and the green represent about 85% of the population. I want you to think about that. The only way for us to beat this thing is to get out of their system. That is the answer. Money is not the answer. And, you, and he talked like we got our own economy. It's silly. Do we have our own money? Do we have dollar bills around here with black faces on it or something? What? We don't have our own money. We don't control the banking system. You can go get a black, you can find a black bank. But that black bank is still regulated by the banking system, which is still a part of the same system. I can go on and on and on. It all ties back to them, so it don't matter if you're spending your money with a black face, you're still spending money in this system. When they started preaching that collective bull crap to us, we were actually unified people because we understand we understood why we were unified. We, we didn't have no kind of bigotries among each other. You didn't have any kind of clashes behind no brother's religion. There was no kind of issues with who a brother dated or married or who a sister dated or married. We didn't care about interracial couples and none of that stuff. We understood that the thing that unified us was our dealing, our, our American experience, our so-called black American experience. That is the thing that unifies us. And it is the one thing that don't change no matter how much money you got. A rich nigga is still a nigga. Didn't Jay-Z tell you all that? That's the one thing that your money cannot buy you out of is the fact that you are still a, 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 a member of a racial group that is targeted by this system, that is used by this system to create strife, to create tension amongst the people. Racism is a push ideology. It is a, it is a, uh, a manufactured ideology. It is, not, it is not normal to hate somebody simply because they look different. That's not normal. This is a manufactured ideology. And we didn't play into that at one time. We didn't really care about the race of a person. We, we cared about the content of their character. But we also understood that we could not trust certain people. So we had to be cautious around certain people. Not to say that we thought that every single white person we came across was evil. But we knew they were white, so we had to be cautious. That was a thing. But we were cautious among our own also. We judged our own the same way. We had to check them out and make sure that they were legit. But the more we preach this racial collectivism, the worse off we've gotten. The only thing we can do is get out of this system. We need true independence, man. You're not independent just because you, you have a whole neighborhood full of red, black, and green houses, bro. And I can go on and on with this, man, but I'm not going to go on and on no more, man. This, this video has been long enough. I'm going to stop here, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Blackout. So long.